Hello, puppies and kittens. Welcome to another episode of Skep Talk. We are April 8th, 2024. Welcome to the future where we all have flying cars and robot servants. And if you like this show, please push that button for Super Chats. It will be read at the end of the show. And my guest host today is Super Dave, Professor Dave. How do you... How do you do, sir? <laughs> Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Super Dave, whatever. We can use any adjectives we want there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, the last time I met you in person for a few drinks after a, you know, a celebratory evening was when you met with a madman in front of a huge crowd at mm -hmm. Rice University. And, uh, and, I, and I know we've talked about this before, but let's, let's just bring that up again. I just want to call back. Why not? Out that <laughs> this guy... Who kept telling us we do, that we don't have a clue, and I'm sure that in a in a in a structured debate format, maybe he might have been he might have had a game that he could have played that, but uh, in in regular discourse and certainly in like scientific discourse, when we have uh, when, where our debates are in writing and all of this in peer review. I don't think he has an argument. I don't think he's ever published anything to say that we don't. He can't publish anything to say we don't have a clue, can he? Of course not. Um, and that's why he doesn't. If he could, he would have at this point. Um, and that's the irony. He is a working scientist, so he knows how to publish science. And he knows that scientific discourse occurs in the primary scientific literature. So he doesn't do that. And then my favorite uh, you know, audience questions were the ones that were like, "Why? what are you doing? Why are you making YouTube videos? You're a scientist publish something. He's like, well, I'm going after the people who can't read the primary literature. So yeah, it figures. <laughs> I love the undereducated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I recently, I, I knew you were, a, I knew you were a big deal for a long time and that you did educational content for a long time, you know, taking on flat earthers and other such, you know, anti-science idiots. I didn't realize that your channel was an order of magnitude larger than me. And if you don't mind my repeating what I told you in email the other day, I mean, I, I don't, I don't get what it is. Why are you such a big? Just because you're younger, cuter, and smarter than me with all your mm -hmm. academic accolades, what the hell do you have that I don't have? Well, I'm only objectively younger than you. That's the only thing that we can <laughs> agree on unanimously. Um, I think the thing is that, well, we, we the thing is that we both make educational content. There are definitely purely debunking channels. Um, and then I think you came at it maybe from a debunking angle, but then you do like your phylogeny tutorials and things like that. For me, I came at it purely from the perspective of I, I teach organic chemistry. I'm going to upload, I'm going to deliver my OCHEM lectures to camera as though I'm teaching class. And let's see if those are helpful to students. So it's definitely a totally different angle. And that's why I was able to amass uh, a large and continue to amass a large subscriber count. It's really just a lot of students all over the world giving me a totemistic kind of like, thank you for helping me pass my classes. The least I can do is subscribe. <laughs> and, you know, so uh, and now at this point that I cover several dozen topics, it's just a wider pool for people to find me for their, you know, whatever various classes they're taking. You know, it's funny that I, I've been I've been at this kind of old school and there's a number of people like yourself who uh, who started into this after I started and have surpassed me and I don't have a problem with that at all because there there are some people that have really educational content and I, and that I'm proud to know them if that makes any sense mm -hmm. uh, so I'm 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 delighted that there are people like yourself that have channels like you do that just seem to be motivated for the greater good I mean you you, you I don't. I don't see this as being a necessarily a, a profit driven thing for. I know it, it wasn't for me. I did this for ten years, totally sacrificing all of my spare time to put into my channel, and I wasn't making a dime off it. This was just something that I felt that I I needed to do because I knew I could do it, and I knew that there wasn't many. There weren't many people who could. And there's mm -hmm. certainly in the same situation with you. How many people really can do what you do? Well, it's not quite the same situation. My channel is my primary source of income, so it's definitely uh, I support I support my family on 
on YouTube AdSense revenue. I have other revenue streams, but you know, YouTube AdSense is like 70% probably of my income. So it's, uh, yeah, I do it, I do it for money, but, uh, there, there's no, it, it's not completely lacking in altruism. I mean, it, I, I do really enjoy getting those notes and those comments from students, particularly in underdeveloped countries. They're saying I have come at a complete loss of educational opportunities. I don't have textbooks. I don't have good teachers. Like this is how I learned this. So thank you. You know, so that definitely feels yeah, good. If I can give a momentary brag, there there are two messages that I get that I that I love. I, I get messages on the phylogeny videos that I do that you know, or, or any of the science based videos where people tell me that that uh, that that my content helped them get through, you know, the, yeah. their their chem their their biochem class or whatever that right. helped them get them through whatever class, and that's lovely. But the the yeah. ones that I that I really appreciate getting, and I've been getting an average of roughly one a day. Uh, for about a decade, I've mm -hmm. been getting messages from people telling me that that, that something something I said some of, some of my content helped them walk away from delusion. Yeah, deep and program. So there, are, there are former former believers thanking me almost every day. And if I didn't make any money at this channel, I would still be doing it because for that reason, just that hugely reason. important. Yes, hundred percent. All right, so we've got uh, some calls. Uh, at least we've got one. Yeah, we've got a handful of callers here. And we're going to start with a theological non-cognitivist, Collier. Can, Collier, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you two hear me? My I old, do. Or as, to, honor, uh, to honor Christopher Hitchens, I'll say, am I audible too old? Okay. <laughs> And and uh, rather than read rather than re me me read out the question that I have here, why don't you uh, why don't you read out the question to get us sure started? Sure thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, my question is is basically I wanted to explain kind of why I'm a, well I'm a moral I'm a theological non cognitivist. You know, I would say and meaning I would say I'm a I'm an agnostic in that I don't know, and I would say I'm an atheist in that I'm I'm not convinced. And so, to a certain degree, I would I would say that someone who would confess that they are a theological non-conscious are more so like kind of the ultimate skeptic. They put themselves in a neutral position where they say they don't believe, they're not convinced, if they, they don't know, they're not convinced, if they still believe, and then put themselves in the position to where they open themselves up to the possibility of the supernatural God and or gods. And uh, and spirits and souls and whatnot, and then they put themselves out of this. They step out of that realm of doubt into a certain realm of belief, where they can say, "Okay, well, Pascal's wager is watered down, maybe into God is all benevolent, and maybe Pascal's wager isn't you're choosing hell and a burning fire over paradise, but you're choosing not knowing." And you, where you're sent to the grave, and you never get to know the truth. Whereas if you accept the truth, i.e., God, you get to know and live forever if you choose to do so. And that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Well, my my position has always been that the people you know, matters of faith is always pretending to know things you don't know, and and that's right. my biggest problem. You, you you may as well just be making up statistics out of your head. And right. every day, people tell me that Jesus loves me, and other messages like, 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 how the fuck do you know, Aaron? What's that? I dropped the call. That person is banned. Oh, really? Really? Okay. Well, okay. Didn't seem um, too offensive to me, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I can piggyback on that. Like, it's I, he, he opened up just kind of like like I, it's refreshing to me when theists can admit that their position is purely faith based and not reason based. In such a case, I'd say, great. I mean, whatever you believe in God, it is a faith. It is not based on any element of reason or evidence, and you simply believe in it. And I don't have any problem with that. Then he started going off into the Pascal's wager thing, and it's like, all right, I don't know about any of this rest of this stuff. Like, just believing in eternal life doesn't give you eternal life. That's not how that works. Um, but okay. you can believe in any God you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the next call I think is going to be interesting. So we have. Anthony, who says that abiogenesis doesn't have any naturalistic explanation. Well, let's talk about that. Anthony, can okay. you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
Absolutely, yes. Yep. Yeah, I always have to apologize when I start a call because my phone usually has some sort of audio issues. But yeah, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about abiogenesis. I am a theist, um, okay. and I kind of wanted to play off of uh, Professor Dave's debate with James, Dr. James Tor, if that's all right. Oh, and I would love have... to go into that. Absolutely, yes. Because I know you were there too, Aaron, and you asked a question at the end. I did watch the debate, and it seemed to me that Professor Tor was asking questions about the science and the chemistry involved, and it just didn't seem like answers were being given that showed that these. Yeah, he had very carefully solved. formulated questions. His his so questions were... were carefully devised to avoid what is actually known. Yeah, he's actually the one who was not discussing the chemistry. I was discussing the chemistry, but let's play this game. What question do you think that he asked that you felt he did that I did not give an adequate answer? Well, he was, I mean, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but he was putting chemical formulas on the board and, and okay, I don't like really what? understand it. A bit. Again, I was about to say, I don't, I don't understand it at a deep level, but I assume that, you know, that these are, so, are chemical interactions that would have to happen for for bio macromolecules to to form but then and... see that's the thing okay. you're, you're outing yourself here see he drew something on the chalkboard that impressed you for whatever reason and then you felt that that made it a valid question the first thing he drew is two amino acids and he drew them linking to form a dipeptide a very specific dipeptide um and that's a straw man first of all there's no reason to believe that a dk linkage was needed for abiogenesis to occur. And number two, I went over several references. There was that powder paper that produced uh, that that produced uh, peptide linkage with all proteinogenic side chains. So not only did I prove that his question wasn't valid, but I answered it anyway. So what I'd like to know yeah, is if, what is it about that portion that you felt was inadequate from my side? But try to be as specific as possible. Well, I, I, I honestly, I didn't think it was completely reasonable to think someone was just going to like solve these advanced chemical formulas on the board at that particular moment. But at the same time, it, it there wasn't really didn't seem to be an ex explanation given as to how it would happen. Like, like how well, would you like to have? It, it, would you it, like it, to have that explanation? I would like Go to, back and well, watch I the like debate. To... I, I flashed a paper that that talked about those specific peptide linkages beyond discussing how what he was actually asking for was a straw man, wasn't needed. But see, that's the thing is he he played this game of I'm going to write something on the board. And then when he doesn't, because why would he? Because all the schema are in the papers, the actual primary scientific literature. Then I'll pretend I won something. And people who are impressed by him drawing an amino acid on the board for absolutely no reason will think that he won something but so yeah. again what is it that you think that he asked that i didn't answer but i need you to be very specific right just kind of okay, going so they were, generally he drew something right that doesn't work all right so he said there were five steps to the origin of life problem that we're clueless about and i don't i think they were you know polypeptides uh information in the in the cell assembly polypeptides, of the cell. polynucleotides polysaccharides specified information in the cell okay so polypeptides and polynucleotides have been made by prebiotic means for decades right that's why he did the specific dk linkage and why he did the specific three prime five prime problems that are straw men because he knows that we've been making polypeptides and poly and polynucleotides by prebiotic means for decades we were talking about dozens of papers that do them different means, wet, dry cycling, prebiotic syntheses, it's it's over. We know how those can form prebiotically. That's why he was moving the goalposts. Polysaccharides can evade by enzymes. Specified information is gibberish. It doesn't mean anything. It's creationist propaganda, and we didn't get to the cell. But that's why I was trying to talk about systems chemistry. So my question to you is, what? why were you not... What, polypeptides and polynucleotides in particular, we were talking about many papers that achieve those molecules prebiotically. So why didn't that register? Why didn't that seem to register while you were watching? Okay, so I just want to make sure my understanding is correct. Polypeptides, that would be like proteins, right? Is that an example yeah. of a polypeptide? Or a, 
Yes. Okay. So, so are you saying that we have a a strong understanding of of how proteins would have formed on an early Earth? Yes. Is that we have a yeah a number of ideas do. for that. Yes, including sure. including abiotic proteins. <clears throat> okay. So when we look in nature at the, today, are proteins something that we'll find? forming outside of living organisms or is there, there have been experiments before? showing the formation of abiotic proteins yes proteins that would be functional in in living organisms well they're they're, they're well, not they're not from living organisms they're abiotic so, okay, so the, the, the common argument is that, is that the, the common argument is the circular argument that proteins only come from life and all, all life has proteins therefore they have to have been created together. However, there are abiotic proteins that have been that have been shown how they can be naturally uh, naturally synthesized. So, proteins are not necessarily always only exclusively from life. Let me jump into though we're we're getting a little hung up on terminology. So, protein is a polypeptide that has some biological function. So, the the that's why we say polypeptide in the context of abiogenesis. All we're saying is that there are plenty of ways that amino acids can link together spontaneously to form these long chains. Wet dry cycling. This has been uh, Dave Deemer's team does this in hot springs. They go and they actually perform these in actual analog. Uh, uh, situations, not in the lab. So, uh, polypeptides forming is totally, it's non-controversial whatsoever. We've known this for like 40 years that now you're talking, you're, you're switching it a little bit. Now you're trying to talk about actual biological function. So that's where systems chemistry comes in. So you have to be talking about systems of molecules, like small peptides and small, uh, polynucleotides or oligonucleotides that are evolving in tandem. And so it's very complicated. I don't think we're going to get too far on that uh discussion right now on this call but they are two separate things we're talking about the material and then the biological function which ev evolves over time okay so let, let's say the material would, would be the amino acids and from what i understand that the 20 that are used in life they are not they do not appear in nature we have to create them synthetically in labs is that correct no that's not correct what do you mean <laughs> okay we can't, I, i'm we not, can I'm, just, I, I'm actually asking so okay. we, we find we find the we find the twenty amino acids used in living organisms in nature not being produced in living things, but just being produced by natural processes. Not just in didn't Earth, we but in also space, find they arrive on meteors. We could we not, not even yeah. on Earth in space they form more than the twenty. Yeah, like the Murchison chondrite had the Murchison chondrite had uh, I forget how many eighty like something 60? like eighty amino acids. Yeah, a lot eight, eighty amino Wait. acids. Yeah, and this this well, was know, from outer that, space. I know that they found yeah. amino acids in a number of different places, but I'm talking about specifically the ones that we find in living organisms. They they also find those in nat naturally occurring in various. As I understood you know, it, the, Earth, right? as I understood it, many Just of the, the amino question. acids that we find in life also came from outer space. And I'm not saying that they originated there because they don't have to. We have mechanisms no, yeah. by which they can originate here on Earth. Yes, we're not saying that uh, that amino. Sorry, we're not saying that um, that amino acids that went to form life all came from space. We're saying that it is so trivial for them to form spontaneously that they also form in space where there is not even a liquid medium, a solvent within which to react. That's how easy it is for amino acids to form. There are dozens and dozens of uh, of, uh, of prebiotic prebiotic synthetic pathways. That have been examined in the lab as well, uh, and and in uh, in 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 vivo situations, but uh, yeah, no, the amino acids forming is beyond trivial. And then beyond that, we're saying polypeptides forming is beyond trivial. Wet dry cycling, all of these things. So mm -hmm. the much more interesting question is how did the function evolve? I'll give you that. That that's harder to wrap your head around, and that's where systems chemistry comes into play. But that the molecules themselves form is just so not even for james to say that we're clueless about those molecules forming is just such an insane lie it's such like a blatant preacher lie that it just makes him ridiculous at face value when he talks about any of these molecules that we're clueless about them while we're discussing dozens of papers demonstrating how they come about prebiotically it's insane now you've also interviewed uh, uh, origin of life scientists right i forget the number 
of scientists yeah, that you interview. But yeah, but, but I mean, they're also explaining directly, uh, yeah, converse of what of what James Tour is is saying, right? Yeah, yeah, right. of course. So, <laughs> so Dr. the, the James question. Tour... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, the question that question. I that I asked, the question that I had for James Tour, unfortunately, I was the last person to ask the question, uh, and they they said that they, we had to clear out of the room, like in that minute. So I don't have an ability to push back. I I have to shut the fuck up at the end of my question and just get out, which is what was so awkward about it. I'm asking Tour a question because I know he will not answer it honestly, because Tour wants to conceal his creationism he wants to make he wants to feign that he's that he's being scientific but all of the prerequisite requirements for the conditions for the origin of life he's he's rejected all of them so far as i know he's a young earth creationist he he doesn't he doesn't accept any of the requirements that it that the earliest uh, microfossils for example are known from 3.8 billion years old he doesn't accept that he doesn't accept any of it but you can't hold him to that. Well, at least I couldn't hold him to that, given that I have 30 seconds to speak, and then I have to shut up, and we have to leave the room. Hmm. And then he dodged my yeah. question, just completely. Well, he, yeah, he, I mean, I, I won't d deny that, but um, I guess I had uh, a couple, just a couple more questions then, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'll check what you've said so far. So I, I kind of surprised some of the stuff you said, I, I'm kind of surprised by, but you know, I'll look into it. I guess I'll finish with a couple just more. Just watch um, my content, debunking all of his lies, man. Just actually watch my content. I go through very, very, with a lot of detail, referencing dozens and dozens of articles from the primary literature and explain in extreme detail how everything he's saying is a lie. Just actually watch the content, but continue to ask your question. Yeah, so he has on his on he has put up a challenge to people he say are credible scientists to say to you know submit him the answers to the problems he's posing. And from what I understand, no one has responded. What do you think is going on there? Is is are they just ignoring him, or is it just like they think he's too silly to deal would, with? What would an astrophysicist there? would an astrophysicist take a flat earther seriously? And, and bend over backwards to meet some challenges that a flat earther puts forward. Prove, hey, astrophysicists, prove the earth is a sphere. And if you don't, it's because you can't and you're scared. James is a creationist troll. The legitimate scientific community ignores him and doesn't care about him. And I also uh, debunked his challenge in the debate in content after that, and then again with Lee Cronin in conversation. And I actually just did it for you earlier in this conversation, and you've already forgotten, right? I didn't His hear DK that linkage, part of it. The first oh, one yeah, was polypeptides. That, that part I did yeah, it was yes. the DK linkage straw man. The second one was polynucleotides. It was the three prime, five prime linkage straw man. Number three, polysaccharides, enzymes made them. Number four, specified information. It's creationist propaganda. It's not a real thing. And five, cell, living cell. That's systems chemistry, which he continues to pretend doesn't exist. That's the most complicated right, well, one to answer, but the first four are ridiculous. So well, I do I do want and to finish up my last answer. question. Yep. My last question will be about about that one. So I, I'm I'm very certain I'm correct about this. Scientists have not been able to create a functional cell from scratch in a lab anywhere at any time. So because it's if, not a single I, one step process. It's not like you take a bunch of powder <clears throat> And, and mix it with what water else? in a blender, and it produces a rabbit. It, it's, they don't uh, it's, have to do it there, in one step. It, there, <clears> but <throat> it, there are so many okay. steps. I mean, I've, I've got a list of dozens, literally dozens, of different studies for different stages of the sequential process, dozens of them. And we know that it's not just a couple dozen stages. There's more to it than that. But the creationists, yeah, always, want it, the creationists always want that one step. Yeah, but I also want to, it's very important to point out that what you're describing is synthetic biology. It's not origin of life research. What you're describing is not a primary goal of origin of life researchers. They're trying to elucidate the pathways by which life arose. They're not trying to create life, right? Creating life, if one were to do so, uh, would would not have any, it wouldn't substantiate abiogenesis. And us not being able to make a cell doesn't negate abiogenesis. They're completely unrelated things. 
right? And that's why yeah. creationists harp on it, because if anyone ever does do it, they'll just go, see, you need intelligence to make life. It's their catch-all bullshit diversion tactic. It has nothing to do with origin of life research. So when anyone says that, you know to ignore what they're talking about. See, it's already happened twice. I mean, Craig Venter created a, uh, created a cell. It's an existing cell. It's a type of cell that we already have, and he assembled it from scratch. But he, he, no, he assembled, he assembled the genome. I want to correct that. He assembled the genome. He, he, he inserted the synthesized genome into existing bacterial cell. Okay, right. same thing. So he, yeah. he creates this, but it's an existing thing. So, so people will say, mm -hmm. well, that already existed. So all you did was put it together. Okay. So then they create a synthetic life form that has well, yeah, homeostasis, that even life form. It's homeostasis. And it's not, it's not it, that they call it lifelike. But it is entirely synthetic. It's not an existent species. But that doesn't matter either, because for the reason that Dave just explained, manufacturing a, a living mm. organism is not the same thing as finding out yeah. how life actually arose. It's synthetic biology, yeah. So, but it's not a, it's not a fully synthetic organism. Its its genome is synthetic, and therefore it is a novel uh, species that he invented. But the yeah. the the construct of, of the cell itself, all he synthesized was the genome. And then inserted it in there, but it doesn't matter. This all just goes to show how this how synthetic biology is just. I mean, there's obviously some overlap in the Venn diagram, but it's not the same field, right? Origin of life researchers are doing completely different science than synthetic biologists, right? It's just a total now, what straw I, man to try to bring up this thing. One of the reasons that I asked for the question that I did is because this is where I find the problem. It's that that creationists really don't care about any of the studies for how we get to the origin of life. Because when you get to the, when you, when you set the stage for what we know about the conditions under which life originated, that's the part they reject. Because it wasn't 6,000 years ago and it wasn't poofed out of nothing by a magical incantation. Because it was 4 billion years ago under very different circumstances. But even old earth creationists Need, right, there are people who accept uh, an old earth, but still need for their God to have come and tinkered and done done all this magic. They still need that, even with the earth being however old they accept so if, it to be. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, Collier, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you the same question that I that I asked James Tour. I mean, and and I, uh, this is a, a question I've asked a number of other people. According to every ounce of paleontological evidence anyone has ever dug up anywhere, there is every indication that the further back in time you look, the simpler and more similar living things appear to be until there are only single cells. And prior to that, there's no evident life of any kind at all. There were no primates 100 million years ago, no mammals 200 million years ago, no dinosaurs 300 million years ago, and no land animals whatsoever. 400 million years ago. And 500 million years ago, there weren't even insects or vertebrates with actual bones. And 600 million years ago, there weren't even the most primitive fish yet. We've never found any trace fossils for macroscopic life forms prior to 700 million years ago. And, 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 but we do have bacterial microfossils covering another 2.8 billion years prior to the first multicellular anythings we've ever found a trace of. The only possible conclusion we can draw from all that is that the most advanced organisms were still only microscopic and microbial for the first 80% of the history of life on this planet. And what we know about the early Earth is that it was much warmer and radio more radioactive than it is today, a bubbling cauldron cooking complex chemicals. And these are the conditions under which life first emerged. Now, do you accept that this is the scientific conclusion for the stage where we start to look at the origin of life? Uh, well, I, I do believe in an old Earth. I do believe the Earth is probably billions of years old. But when it comes to, I mean, you can you know correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes to dating these rock layers where they find these fossils, it seems to me their reasoning is circular. They look at the organism they, oh. they find and then they... Yeah, they, when like let's say they find some some pre some very ancient algae, they'll say, oh, this is a two billion year old rock sample. And if they oh. find like a dinosaur, they'll say, 
oh, this is a 65 million year old sample. So they just date it according to the complexity of the organism they're what, finding. They just, they just guess? <clears throat> no. they just make up they're numbers out of the top of their head? They're doing analysis combined with radiometric dating. They're using two different techniques that align in their in the data. Yeah, let, let, me, let me correct you on this. There was a time in the 19th century when they realized that certain fossils come from certain strata at different layers. Now, the older, the, the lower the layer, the older it is. And so they know that there's ichthyosaurs, for example, are only found in the Jurassic and Triassic. They do, they're not, except for one species, they're not found in the Cretaceous, right? Dinosaurs will be found in the entire Mesozoic, but they're not found above this point. Trilobites are only found in the, tri uh, in the, uh, in the Paleozoic, for example. There are index fossils. But they don't, they'll, they'll know that the Paleozoic is older than the Triassic, Triassic's older than Jurassic and so forth, but they don't know how old. You understand that? I, yes. Well, I, I, I hate, that's, how, that's the story they tell. I mean, that, for, well, that's for not me, a from... story that they tell, that's the fact. So in the 19th century, they were able to say that they, they understand. You can, you have you, you get down to the, the Mesozoic. You have you, you get down past the Eocene. Now we've 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 gone past the uh, the Iridium layer. Now we're into the into, into the Mesozoic era. We've got the Cretaceous. Below that is the Jurassic. Below that is the Triassic. Below that is the Great Dying. Now we're in the Paleozoic, right? So we know about these layers. So we know that this one is older than that one. This one is older than that one. But they don't know how old. And then in the late 19th century and early 20th century, they started to figure out radiometric dating. And then in the 1950s, 1960s, they started perfecting radiometric dating. And now they understand how old. So if they don't just have relative dates. This is older than that. Now they can say that this is this many millions of years old and this is this many millions of years old. You follow me? And it's not because somebody made up a number. I was in a I was in a, a Permian exposure in South Africa. I was in paleontological expedition there, and what they did was they did radiometric dating of two different uh, two different uh, igneous uh, ash falls, volcanic ash falls. They dated both of them, and the layer that we're working at is between these two, and so that put it right around two hundred sixty three million years old. Nobody guessed. Nobody made up a number that was. This is 262, this is 263, so we're nowhere somewhere between this, right? So nobody guessed. We have hard numbers. We have absolute dating. This is what the numbers come back with from radiometric dating. That's how we know. They might be able to radiometric date certain things to certain time frames, but I guess the problem I have is I've seen evidence that they are finding uh, these organisms outside of the layers they say they are. So, I, like for like instance, I mean, they find. Well, I know that they find like a lot of uh, sea creatures on tops of on top of mountains at, on exposed. You know why? To the elements. Oh, okay. You know why? why exactly? All right. If you're looking at the why. Himalayas specifically, it's because they understand tectonic plate movement meant that uh, the Indian subcontinent, this is India and Pakistan, what is today, India and Pakistan, used to be their own island, and they used to be connected to South America and Australia. But they broke away, and that, that tectonic plate moved relatively rapidly and collided with the Eurasian subcontinent roughly 34 million years ago. And what was the seabed between them when, when India crashed into Eurasia? The seabed between them got thrust into the sky and is still rising because this event is still happening. It's still rising at, at the rate of a, an inch or so a year. So the Himalayan mountains used to be the seafloor between India and Asia. All right. So the, these gigantic cataclysmic uh, tectonic events happened and and somehow these fossils were still preserved through all that massive shifting of why, Earth. Why would they not be? If, if, it, if it's happening well, at an inch a year, how cataclysmic is that? Well, it, it just seems to me like if, if these, these huge, you know, tectonic plates are smashing into each other and, and thrusting into the sky from the ocean, that would... Mm -hmm. At the know, rate that your fingernails grow. It's not an instantaneous process, that it takes millions yeah, of it, years, just like other things it, it, in geological time. Yeah, the, the continents are moving. Think. North America is moving away from Europe at about the same speed that your fingernails grow. That's how cataclysmic it is. 
Now, I, I want to pose, is, there, is it possible that at some point the water was above these mountains? Do you think that's a no. possibility? Okay. Well, the the mountains not? were at the seafloor at one point. So, yeah, there was a time when the mountains were... A, I know, I know that's, a th that's a theory, but I'm, I'm, I'm proposing another no, that, theory. How does it not make sense? I don't so think that you're using let's theory the way the, scientists teaching you what a do. theory means. Can we just, yeah. yeah, let's take it for granted that we know what a theory is, please. Yeah. All right, that's an idea. So in science, so in idea. science, a theory, in science, a theory is, is is an explanation. It's a body of knowledge. So there's this thing called atomic theory, for example, and you don't get to say that nuclear energy is just a theory, because atomic just, theory is every modern scientific theory. You know that every modern scientific theory is also a fact. I don't know about that. I, I, the, the story, the, the story I like to explain to tell to explain this is when I went to high school, they, they taught a class called music theory. And I kicked the door open one day while class was in session and yelled, you can't teach music in school. It's just a theory. It's never been proven. If that sounds silly funny. to you, imagine how silly it is to me when they say that evolution is just a theory. Just a theory means it's just a fact. It's just certain knowledge. Or germ theory or atomic theory or any of these things that are, have been well substantiated for hundreds of years. Uh, yeah, theories are not, uh, facts are, in, uh, a fact is an individual datum. A theory is a model that correlates data yep. and makes predictions. Just because it's called a theory, we, there are theories that we know are, are accurate with extreme certainty. And this might be important too to help you understand it. There's a reason science does that. Because the most dishonest thing you can possibly do is hold a religious belief. Religious belief asserts baseless speculation as if it was a matter of fact and states these things with certainty, asserting what, what you don't know, pretending to know what you don't know. That's a definition of faith. And so that's deceptive and it's dishonest. And so science does the opposite. Science has a rule that you can never prove anything in the positive sense. You can never prove anything to be true. So with that rule in place, I, the, uh, I think the you most have, you know about think... anything, the most you know about anything can only be, you, you can know for absolutely certain that it's true, but you still have to call it a theory. Einstein's theory of relativity was, was effectively proven twice, but science has a rule that you can't prove it, so we can't declare it proven. It was proven in 1916, and it was proven again 100 years later by different means. But we can't say it's proven because science has a rule against it. I think that there are good reasons that have nothing to do with dishonesty for believing some religious claims. Now, yeah, I will admit that a lot of it's unprovable, like the fact that, you know, Jesus paid for people's sins. You know, there's no way to prove that. But would you, would you say like that it's soul... dishonest to say something is true when you can't show the truth of it? When you can't show how think... you know that? I don't think people are saying they know it's true. I think that's why it's called. Faith. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're absolutely saying, saying the absolute truth. Yes, the revealed word, the infallible absolute truth, the revealed God breathed word of God, infallible and perfect in every way. Yeah, they're absolutely saying that, and it's absolute lies. They're they're stating some, lies some, okay, as absolute yeah. truth. Some of them are saying that, but I think most people are, are the average person who's a believer would admit that, you know, there's, there's, there's no way to prove what their, what their, their faith is or parts of their faith. But okay, so there the best reason yeah. evidence for it. There's no the evidence. The best you for can it, come up with important. is they're believing improbable claims through questionable sources on insufficient evidence. That's the best you can say. Yeah. So, I mean, like, if someone says they experience something, it should, that's a reason to believe something, though, right? That's not a, that's not a, maybe not be a good reason, but it is a reason. Subjectively, I mean, yeah. And I, I did the same. Okay. I, I, I was a reborn Christian once upon a time, and I was a neo-pagan spiritualist for a while after that. And I realized both times that faith had deceived me, because faith is the most dishonest and auto-deceptive position it is possible to have. If you want to seek the truth, the first thing you have to do is reject faith. I think we have to have faith because we know that there are things beyond our understanding that exist. We just, but we, we don't we have can... to believe things that are not evidently true. There's no reason why I have to assume things that are not supported. Why, we do why not is have to have faith. So uncomfortable, right? Why can't we just not know things? 
We used to not know anything. Yeah. Now we know some things. Later we'll know more. It just baffled. Yeah. I just, I, think, I, I can't wrap my head around why people can't accept that. Well, because we know, I would say, I would put it, I would put it this way. We know that there are things beyond our senses that exist. We just know yes. that. Now the question is, what what, what? are those things? So atoms. If, there's not being able to sense, not being able to perceive things with our senses does not mean that they're outside of the reach of scientific inquiry. We deal with things in science all the time, every day, that we cannot directly perceive, like atoms. We know they're there, and we don't science, say things but, are true until we can show the truth of it. Okay, but atoms always existed even before we had a way to prove they existed, right? Right, but we didn't yes. say that atoms existed until we could show that atoms existed. Until then, but there, there we was don't a know. time, though, according, according, there was a time, though, according to your logic, where atoms were unscientific because we couldn't prove their existence. No, there was a that time when did. atoms were not proposed because there was no way to show that they existed. Well, okay, just to play devil's advocate, like when Democritus proposed atomic theory, we can say that that was philosophy and not science. I think that's well, that fair was a hypothesis. Say. That was uh, a hypothesis was, uh, he proposed, and it was a way. There was ways to test it. I, well, there's he, a guy I don't think he had any ways to test it. I don't know how he. I think it was. It was just pure conjecture at that point. Um, but yeah. Well, the, the the hypothesis that he came up with was specifically the reason that you can smell pie, is that uh, is that certain molecules off the off the food are are wafting through the air, and so there's there's a hypothesis given that we can now mm -hmm. test. Now, we go about testing it, and it took us a while to figure out how to test it. And one of the ways was the water thief. I think this was like Carl Sagan's great demonstration, because it used to be thought that air was literally spirit until people figured out how a water thief worked. And that proved that air was actually particulate matter and not spiritual. Mm -hmm. So there, so. All right, so there's the, the Adam hypothesis of Democritus, and there's the God hypothesis, and I think... And how do you test that one? Time before, well, we look at, I think, to me, I think that there's a dichotomy, but there's a, a true dichotomy between naturalism and uh, theism. And we, we, we assess the ability of naturalism to account for what we observe, and if it can't, then, well, it must have been God. Or some god. Maybe yeah, we, there, there's Yahweh, never an excuse. There, which there's is never the an excuse where we get to say for a god ever. <laughs> yeah, there, there's never a time when we can say, "Well, I don't know." Therefore, magic. Yeah. Lightning bolts were not Zeus, even when we thought that they were, and all of the other things that we used to attribute to gods. So extrapolate that pattern, right? Everything was once gods. Then we learned what things actually are. Just extrapolate that pattern continuing to yeah. all of all of the universe never right? never in history has anything ever all the things that we used to attribute to to god so i mean epilepsy used to be attributed to demo, to demonic possession right and we had all these people around jesus's time who thought that they were exercising demons because they didn't know they didn't know about you know germ theory of disease just a theory yeah germ theory of disease and 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 people at that time didn't know they thought it's all caused by demons so they they think they're exercising demons from people. We thought that 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 the movement of the planets were omens, and comets were omens, and the volcanoes were gods, and tornadoes were gods, and in all of these cases, when we started figuring out what the real explanation was, it was a whole new field of study that was vastly more interesting and more complex than the trivial and stupid excuses that we used to make up for for magic and deities. So where you where you use the word magic and deities, I like to I like to mm -hmm. use the word intelligent design. Yeah, you you so like to use a word that tries to avoid the fact like that you believe in magic. Up. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a belief in magic. And, and so you think intelligence is magic? No, I don't. I think that blessings and curses are both magical enchantments. One's positive and one's negative. This is just this is just standard understanding. So if you believe in blessings and curses, which is all through the Bible, then you believe in magic. But to get to if you believe in incantations, like you when God you, speaks something into existence, that's an incantation. 
If you believe right. in the story of, of, of God fashioning a clay figurine and breathing into it the breath of light, that is literally a golem spell. There's also other spells in the Bible. There's an elemental spell in Leviticus 14. There's ne- necromancy in, uh, in one of the chapters of, of, of Ezekiel, I think it is. There's, there's magic all through the Bible. There's dragons and witches and wizards and incantations and sorcerers and, pro- and, and transformations and transfigurations and all kinds of magic in there. There's even water bending in the Bible. But even if, if you believe in the Bible, so you believe in magic. Gone, even if you're not so far gone as to. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I have to, uh, I have to change the batteries in there. <laughs> Yeah, so magic is the supernatural. The supernatural, the supernatural is whatever bullshit explanation you have that that, that you don't have an explanation for. It becomes PFM, what? pure fucking magic, and that the let's, let's, the let's, dressed up word is is supernatural. Let's uh, let's come full circle then. Let's say if humans were to were to ever actually assemble a, a, a complete cell from scratch in a lab. Wouldn't that be analogous to God creating man from from clay and, and earth and materials? Wouldn't that kind of like... no? Because that's not that's not how cells originated. That would just be our well, our, our assembling of those things. We have to figure out how would, these I, things happen naturally. Maybe Check they did. Back. That's the point. No, but well, what's the point? <clears throat> the, the point is that. We we if we see them being assembled by intelligent agents, then we know. And we know that, that they were not agents, assembled by an intelligent agent. We know that they, they came about that. naturally. We do know that. Uh, we do know that. The, if if you if you want it, anytime if you want to ascribe natural processes to this intelligent designer. And, and you and you seek to actually describe these natural mechanisms. How is that any different from science, right? When you're rejecting the concept of abiogenesis, right? You are invoking magic. You're invoking the idea of a deity that just wiggles his nose and there's some magic and some molecules come together. Instead, I think it's much wiser to try to understand the physical mechanisms by which life can have come about and probably did. And that, guess what, doesn't actually negate the concept of a, of a god, right? You can still be a theist. Right? This is what's so unbelievably weak about God of the Gaps arguments, right? There's just never going to be a situation where you can say, I don't know, therefore God, and have that be a sensible argument that amounts to anything other than invoking magic, right? If, if you want to believe in a god who created a universe and we won't talk about cosmology now, that can be a different conversation, but let's say that there's a universe unfolding. Why would that deity not be able to bestow that universe with properties such that life could come about naturally, right? And these would be these mechanisms that scientists are investigating right now, right? Why does it, why, why do you reject that concept and resort instead to magic, to the idea that some supernatural event has to occur where a deity is nudging molecules together in just the right way, right? Why can't the laws inherent in the universe allow for life to arise spontaneously? I, honestly, I think that there that might be a possibility. I just haven't seen the evidence to suggest that, but I have seen That's evidence because you that don't intel- look into it. <laughs> I Maybe think that true, you both but... are ignoring it and lack the fundamental understanding of chemistry to be able to comprehend the literature in the field. All right, well, let me finish. This will be my last question. So with what you just said, you're, you're, you're both claiming that there's good reason to believe natural. So when we mix chemicals together, no living thing has ever been created, right? Just from mixing chemicals together in natural physical chemical interaction. Life right? isn't so. life isn't a few chemicals that you mix together. See, this is the yeah, fundamental once again, gap here that you're not going to be able to surmount unless you learn basic chemistry and biology. This is never going to be intelligible to you, unfortunately. And Sorry unfortunately, this is not even this is not even basic chemistry. This is this is biochemistry. This is very complex. But as I said, I've got a list of dozens, literally dozens of different studies for different stages of the sequential process. And we can go through each one of them, and I'm sure you'll be satisfied that, yeah, this is how all of this happens spontaneously. This is, this is self-synthesis. This is, this is autocatalytic. Uh, these are natural processes. There are no intelligence either involved nor possible. 
Well, just it's totally superfluous, right? If we're if we're demonstrating so how all of these things happen spontaneously, where what room is there for for a uh, for a deity, right? It doesn't make any sense. So, what would you say is the best single source of the the list of scientific experiments that you're mentioning are on Raw? Like, is it compiled in a certain place, or is it just no? Well, I, I, I said brag, I, I built up a list. My James Stewart I, content. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been following right, so, Origin so of Life. Farina's YouTube channel. That's where I should start. That's where I should look. For, well, he, for he has his list I don't as well. Know. I mean, there's, yeah. there's I don't know who has compiled the literature. But yeah, I don't know I who compiled a list very, of this uh, besides diversely. myself. Yeah, but but I, I, I've been following this research for decades. So when I see some, oh, this is another advance in Origin of Life research, I'll, I'll keep that link, right? And so I've, I've kept a number of them. I've got dozens okay. of them, and they're for different stages. So you know, people always try to come up with something that, you know, science can't explain X. And if that was true, that doesn't, that doesn't mean God. That doesn't mean magic. That means that science can't explain that. But the thing is, we actually have past tense already explained most of the shit that believers say, well, you can't explain it. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, right, well, well, Genesis research is just very heady and it's just difficult to get through. But again, that's why, like, you can you can glance at primary scientific literature. But if you'd like to hear me walk you through it, my content on James Tour, just the whole playlist, especially those first two James Tour, seven hundred papers and still clueless or whatever parts one and two, I go through a lot of literature and explain it with as much clarity as possible for that the layman can hope for. So I would recommend yeah. watching that. I, I'm wondering if we couldn't do a collaborative effort to just make a really long fucking video that talks mm -hmm. about all these different stages. Yeah, I'm actually uh, planning on doing a series, uh, like a, a fairly long series on origin of life research and uh, without any creationist context, just purely outlining the research. And at no point do you ever get a needed. packet of powder to run into a blender and get a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you for your time uh, i'll look into what you said so appreciate it thanks for calling thank in thank you. Bye. well that was a bucket of chuckles was, right, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm serious that, that would probably be a very good idea dave if we if we were yeah. to do something that would just be an easy source for people to look up because people are asking for this all the time and i don't know why no, no body of scientists that I know of has made just a simple educational list. Four lay people, yeah, and, and times that yeah. they do, like Jack Shostak had that, uh, that like that, you know, when James Stewart attacked Jack Shostak for the Nature article that was just in the magazine, a couple of pages for lay people. Like that's just what ends up happening is, um, and like scientists aren't really invested in that, but the occasions that they do that, creationists attack them pretending that they're dramatically oversimplified explanations for lay people represent state of the art science and trying to poke holes in it. Well, you didn't expect, this isn't for that. This is for like Joe Schmo to read and maybe understand, right? It's like- the, And the way that they simplify the it, the way that they simplify it, I mean, it's like creationists refuse, like when we're talking about evolution, they refuse to, ex to accept that we're talking about emergent populations over many generations. Yep. No, they want one Instead single of, individual in one lifetime to change into another form. A dramatically that would be, different form. Yeah. Yeah. A, a hundred million years later form. They want that right. one individual thing to turn into that. And they've got to know how full of shit they are. They just, but they, they just have to have this make-believe thing. And, and, yeah, and they make their money people. off this propagandizing this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the next call here. Uh, let me see, who is that? We've got a theist lined up. We've got a couple of atheists <laughs> waiting, but I'm going to jump to the theist, prioritize that one. So, Matthew, in Sweden, can you hear us? Uh, uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. So it okay, says here that you are a you pantheist struggling with beliefs. Yes. yes. Okay. And then there's a curious thing that says the atheist alternative seems hellish. Well, that's an interesting thought. Do expand, please. Um, okay. So I am a former follower of a suicide cultist called Leo Gura. Um, I know that guy. Yep. Yeah, um, it was actually your video that made, kind of helped me. 
it was actually kind of your video that helped me like kind of see a lot of his dangers. So like, thank you for I'm that. I'm so happy kind of to crazy. hear that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the thing is that I went from the Leo Gura follower to Salvationist. And during the Salvationist days, I did charity work. And like that made my, my life was complete then basically. But the, with the exception of one thing, and that is that it was impossible to like lie to myself in that like everybody insists that like Jesus Christ is real, but like I, 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 I couldn't see past like my own eyes. I couldn't like tell myself was, there was this one moment when like the, my reverend, like my mentor told me that like when he was young, like they used to sing songs about, I don't remember the exact lyrics, but basically like don't trust your eyes, don't trust your ears. Um, trust the Bible, trust God's word. And that made me like, be like, okay, well, this, this makes no sense. So I'm, I'm an atheist. And then, but then what happened was that like, after my schism with the church, after my separation from the church, I became so unfathomably like depressed, sad, like because not because of the um, departure from the church necessarily, but more so because what I learned from, like, I don't want to call it the atheist perspective, but basically, I don't even know if it's right to call it the rationalist perspective, but the basic idea that uh, life is inherently meaningless, um, what awaits you is death, all of that, that, that package caused such a mental wound that I retreated back into pantheism, because I'd rather worship mm. my chair than actually, like, live. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd rather, like, worship the universe rather than like just live in the um, what do you call it in this pessimistic malaise do you understand what i'm but trying why? to get at yeah my i don't question, see why it's though, pessimistic yeah i mean why like that there is no inherent meaning in the universe or in or to being alive allows you to create your own meaning that's the that's the greatest thing to me right i can decide what matters to me and ascribe meaning to it and follow it and spend time doing that and you know but that that to me is an optimistic message i see um, if you want something hellish just imagine that 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 the meaning of life as your life has been decided for you by some external entity and that whatever and happens to, to you <laughs> yeah and, and no matter how horrific it is you're just a pawn in somebody else's game and you might want to go around Way pretending worse. that you have free will, but this is the same guy who hardens the hearts of the people that he wants to, you know, when he draw, wants to draw out the drama. So he, har he plays both sides of the chessboard. So you're a pawn and you will suffer. And it's all part of God's great plan because he's alone. He has, there's, only other, there's no other God. So he has to play chess by himself. And so that means that certain pawns are going to have to surf, suffer the way he wants. Well, but he said he retreated to pantheism. So you're talking about ascribing some kind of um, the quick, quick qualities of a deity to various other objects, or what? What was your belief system all about? To the universe, to the universe mm -hmm. as a whole. I would rather, I, I, while I, while I'm not following his teachings verbatim, I am now more of a Eckhart Tollean kind of guy. Eckhart Tolle is a, what is the right word? He's a contemporary of Deepak Chopra. Um, oh, no. and yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the, the quantum yeah. mysticism nonsense is annoying, but like yeah, don't beyond that, uh, the idea of, what did you say? Sorry. Look, I said, don't listen to Deepak. But um, the thing is, so, I mean, like everyone's route to their own personal spirituality is, I mean, it's like it, it, as long as you're not making these very concrete claims about this particular deity and this particular scripture, and you have to do this and that's evil and we need to take their rights away, et cetera. That's a terrible thing. But if you just look at the universe and call it God, I mean, like, whatever, like if that makes you feel something and makes you happy and instills some, a, 10% more purpose in your life, like have at it. You know what I mean? I, I don't see that as a harmful thing or like, it's fine. You know, <laughs> Einstein call, called the universe God. He didn't mean the Christian God. He just meant the universe, like whatever. It's, it's everything, you know, it's crazy. 
It's fine. Um, to res if I, I hope I don't come across as, as offensive, but to respond to your earlier statement that as far as I remember was that you, you, you said that um, you get to make your own meaning rather, and Aaron Ra added yeah. that rather than being the pawn of someone else's meaning game, you get to create your, like your own view yeah. of the world. Maybe, if I maybe want my life is, to mean something, if I want my life to mean something, I have to decide what that is, and then I have to work to that end. Implement it, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe, maybe it's just hubris maybe it's just a longing to re like retreat back into delusion or whatever but basically my 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 response to that is that it from from the, the distinction between you get to make your own meaning but ultimately like the universe doesn't care and um there is yeah. and the claim that the universe deeply cares about all of us um one is far more even if it is a delusion, one of, to me is far more preferable, and it's one of the reasons why I would. I, I don't want to sound profoundly like facetious, but it's one of the reasons why I'm still alive because like the, the depression got really bad during like some of the mm -hmm. uh, during the recovery. Do you understand what I'm trying? I don't to get mean at? to be brutal, but the only the okay. only beings out there who care about you are other people. All right. I mean, to to jump on that, it's like, I, I to me, that sounds so much more stressful, because if you're attributing this sentience to the universe, now you have so many follow up questions. Why can't I have what I want? Why is there so much suffering? How how universe are you benevolent universe? Are you allowing this to happen? So you kind of end up with a situation where you have this overarching sentience. And now you're like, well, what's your problem? And now you have to be stressed out about, you know, the, all of the arguments that apply to the personal Christian God or any other God, right? I would still have these questions to some amorphous deity that you call the universe, right? Why is there genocide? Tell me, universe, why are you allowing that to happen, right? I, I think it's much more freeing to rid yourself of such an overarching construct. And you're still dealing with the same problems, whether or not that sentience is there. There is suffering. There is hardship. All of these things exist, but we no longer have to process it through this lens of the will of a, of some of some uh, omniscient, omnipresent entity that somehow wants that for us. Right? It just it makes no sense to me. Somebody just somebody corrected me in the comments. It's not just human people. Dogs care too. They do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a cat. Well, you're out of um, luck. <laughs> Cats couldn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, not as much. I actually brought my protestation to that claim. What a, a either way. Um, what I'm my my response to that sentiment is that I, I can see the truth of it, but it, it ultimately doesn't bring me the the solace that I I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I maybe I'm coming off as facetious or something, but like I don't want to be. I, I to be blunt, I just I don't know if I want to live in reality. Is basically the the problem because like that that's why I said that atheism seems hellish because the, the, I, I get what you're I, saying because I mean this is a this is a problem for a hell of a lot of people that they can't deal with the fact that it is only that, that we all we have is each other. They want to pretend, yes, pretend, and a lot of them have admitted to me that they know that it's make believe. But they want to pretend that 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 they they are best friends with the most powerful being imaginable, somebody who can make two plus two equal five if they need to, somebody who can change the laws of physics, somebody mm -hmm. that'll promise that they'll never die. They want to believe in all kinds of impossible nonsense because reality mm -hmm. somehow scares them. I'm sorry that it scares them. It just and I wish I could empathize. I just never felt that. If I hadn't been raised in a, in a very religious uh, household, I would never have been religious. It's my natural inclination not to buy into the bullshit. Yeah, I mean, let's make the distinction between like religious mythology is make believe, right? People who believe that the stories in religious scripture actually happened, that is a whole nother level. And caller, Matthew, I don't think that you're talking about that, right? A, a, a vague sentiment of sentience over looming, right? That's, 
that's a little bit different. And uh, it's just that as long as that belief, if you if that belief makes you happier and it does not allow it does not cause you to think you're better than anybody, it does not cause you to want to harm others who don't share that belief or try to infringe on the personal rights of other people who have different beliefs. As long as none of those things are the case, you're talking about a very personal, vague spirituality that is pretty unoffensive. I'm not offended by it. Uh, I don't know if Aaron is or not, but I mean, it's just, we're talking about something very, it's categorically different from fundamentalist religion that is poisoning society, right? There, I hold these very radically different and uh, don't think any less of you for holding that kind of belief. It's, I don't see it as problematic. I don't know that I've ever been it's offended. Just... <laughs> oh, I'm offended by religious it's, fundamentalism. Uh... <laughs> uh, I am too. Uh, the Salvation Army, like that, that I worked for, touts, speak, speaks a lot about like absence of what do you call it. They, they speak a lot of like we we are LBGT friendly, but then you go through their library and find books that says that homosexual marriage should be outlawed in Sweden. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, my point, my, my my point is that. Um, what I'm trying to get to is that um, there's one. You said, Professor Dave, that I that like you don't find my beliefs offensive. Um, I, I'm grateful for that, but I do have a follow-up question to that, and that is, if I were to say, for example, that uh, it brings me a lot of comfort to believe that I'm that while my physical body is mortal, my there is something waiting for me on the other side of the shore. Would you be offended by that? Um, no, I, I, I'm certainly not offended by that. And as uh, when you're saying so, like, I cannot holding beliefs in something that I can't disprove. Uh, how could that possibly be offensive? Like, I don't, I don't know with certainty uh, no. that there's no afterlife, but uh, I certainly like, don't believe it. You are and there's stating, no evidence for one, but you know, yeah, you are stating baseless speculation as if it's a matter of fact, pretending to know things you don't know. We call that lying. Yeah. Well, it's a belief. I mean, you I know, know, I'm I, a fiction writer, so it's a belief, but it's still an assertion. You can't show the truth of it. You're stating it as fact. You're not saying I believe this thing. You're stating that this is what when people told me today, people tell me that, you know, that I'm going to meet Jesus. I'm going to meet God and God is going to send me to hell and Jesus loves me. All that's bullshit. You are asserting shit. You can't show any truth to it. Mm. Yeah, um, let's 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 put these in tiers, though, right? When you're when you're making very very specific assertions based on religious scripture about deities, where all of these aspects are self contradictory, it defies basic logic, right? That a god would make us to do these things and then punish us for doing them eternally, and yet he's all loving, right? That's ridiculous. But I can't prove that we're not in a simulation and when I die, I wake up from the simulation and something else happens. Like, I can't prove that that's not the case. I certainly don't believe it. There's no evidence to suggest that. But those are two different versions of an afterlife. One that is based on just mountains of fallacies and one that is just like, eh, mm, you know, like <laughs> those are different things to me. Um, but yet, nevertheless, I do believe that death is the end of your consciousness because there's nothing to suggest otherwise, right? Um, I, 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 I don't know what, but potentially more to say. I'm, I'm very grateful that you uh, took me on. I, I'm, I'm thinking a lot, but I'm finding a word. I'm struggling to phrase what I like, what I respond to specifically. I, I think I've gotten enough information. Um, All right. Well, I appreciate your call. Okay. I do have a number of people, other people that we have. Uh, we, we prioritized the theist. And so I do need to get some, some of these other calls so that I'm not rude to them. But, uh, but all right. thank you for calling in. I wish thanks you all calling. the best. I, I, uh, thanks for calling. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to move on to, uh, I'm just going to take these uh, next in order, first, first come, first serve. And we have Max uh, in India. Who is an atheist? Max in India. What is your question, please? Yes. So um, I've been talking to uh, quite a few religious people, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I've, and when I ask them what is the proof of God, they say that the universe was created 
uh, and therefore it is a it it should have a creator. So I asked them. Okay, so the fact that the universe that was the not universe... created, the fact that the universe was not created, thus disproves the creator. Yeah. So well, let's yeah, I, I, the question. That <laughs> is where I that is that is where I lead them to, um, like. So, so when I when I ask them what is the proof that universe was created, maybe the universe was eternal, uncreated, right? Mm -hmm. So they they prove it by science. They say that Big Bang, your science uh, claims that the universe create was created with the Big Bang, right? Uh, except so, that it's uh, not. My yeah. The the Big Bang yeah, exactly. is the beginning of cosmic inflation, mm -hmm. not the beginning of the universe. Yeah. Material energy already wow. existed. Every model of cosmogony that has a has a singularity begins with the singularity. There's no time. There is no time in any model ever where there is just nothing to begin with. Never. Well, there look, are yeah, uh, there are a number of models. Great. There's a number of concepts that include an eternal universe with a, like a kind of a big bang, big crunch kind of oscillation, and that's not a that's not a fair description of it, but it's something like that. But even even if you don't have the earlier version of the universe, where say the the arrow of entropy goes the other way or what have you, regardless, even if it's a beginning of the time situation, the singularity still starts. No, there's never a time when there's nothing. Uh, universal wave energy always existed. Material energy always existed. These things were never created. They're eternal. Here's the thing: the, so the people you're who. Saying... <clears throat> Let, let me make one point real quick. The the people who bring up this argument, they have zero interest in discussing cosmology or astrophysics or anything like that. They're just trying to find a way to substantiate their deity that they want to believe in. They, you, what you tell them is that you are uncomfortable with a universe existing without cause. Therefore, you have manufactured an infinitely more complex entity to somehow exist without cause. So you're making the problem much worse. We don't know exactly why the universe exists or how it began or anything like that, but creating an infinitely more complex entity that and not explaining its origin is hypocrisy and extremely poor logic. That's how I go about answering that question. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, actually I I say the, say the same thing that uh like if if Instead of it, instead of saying I don't know how it all, uh, uh, how it all was created, why why do you assume that there is a supernatural or a fictional character called God or Santa Claus? Like, if you don't know how it happened, you can just say you don't know. So about right. Big Bang, uh, I want to know about I want to know your position on it. Like, do you are you saying that Big Bang? only started the expansion but the universe was always there are you saying that yes yes well it starts with the singularity right. and, and then... yeah i mean it, it doesn't posit the source of the singularity yeah now there may have been yeah. events before the singularity but there was never just nothing never yeah so it, it, it always irritates yeah, right. me that like every creationist always tells me well you you believe everything came from nothing I'm not the one that believes that. Creationists even are the ones who believe that. When they bring that up in a discussion of yeah. abiogenesis, then you really know that they're off the rocker, right? They're going, trying to go 10 billion years in the past. Like, come on, man, stay on topic. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have one more question that I, that, I, that I face problem with when I'm talking to religious people. I understand how evolution works, okay? But when they ask, me ask me for a proof uh, i can't give them because i am not a subject matter expert on biological evolution right but i understand what you what <coughs> evolution is so my question is how can you how can you prove within 2 minutes to a to a, to a believer that evolution is actually true like if we are on a call how can you prove this look at agriculture <coughs> look at livestock cultivate cultivation uh, microbiology, uh, um, virology, uh, uh, medicine, toxicology. There's all these different sciences that depend on uh, allelic variants changing in reproductive populations. Look at how they derived bananas, for example. Look at the you, um, the, the the Brahma cattle, the Bos Indicus. You know, all cattle, all the different breeds of domestic cattle we have, 
They're either uh, a derivative of Bos Taurus or they're a derivative of Bos Indicus, or they're or they're a mix of mm-hmm. them. And and Bos Indicus, of course, is the, the Indian, uh, the Indian cattle. But people will say, well, that's just micro, but they don't understand. That's the step you show that people you show that evolution can make the step, and now you have the mechanism that continues on. Yeah when, yeah, when people say prove evolution, they're they're asking a different question when, than what they're actually asking. Prove evolution, we observe it every day. Proof, done. What they're asking is prove that extant life is the product of evolution over billions of years. And unfortunately, it's hard to show a singular piece of evidence, right? That's not how science works. You don't get one thing, right? It's a very large body of evidence that all agrees on one thing. So we're talking about the fossil record, we're talking about genetics, we're talking about all these different things. So it can be hard to, in a minute, show. But I mean, I can, you, I can I mean, help. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like to can... tell people that, that here's, here's a number of, you know, there's no, that the facts of evolution, it's a fact that evolution happens, that biodiversity and complexity do increase and that both occur naturally only by evolutionary means. And then, and, you know, agriculture, and livestock cultivation and toxicology and virology and all of these things are examples of that. It's a fact that alleles vary with increasing distinction in reproductive populations. We can see that in the breeding of practically anything, you know, and that, and that these are accelerated in genetically isolated groups. Everybody understands how that happens. Nobody even argues against that. So they tell you to prove what they yeah. already know. And then, you know, natural selection, sexual selection, and genetic drift have all been proven to have predictable effect in guiding this variance. And I said, they'll still start making up excuses because they want a rabbit to turn into a pomegranate. They want a pine tree to give birth to an elephant. They're trying to work with a straw man. They they want very much not to understand. they're, They're not looking at millions of years. They're not looking at they're not looking at emergent populations. They're not starting with a population that then becomes two daughter groups and then four and then eight and 16 and so on, except for those that go extinct. They, they have a complete straw man distortion where they want the, the microevolution and macroevolution to be completely different things. And the macroevolution, they want to be completely magical. They're trying yeah. not yeah. to understand because they're afraid of understanding. Yeah, I mean, Yep. Um, yeah, you just yeah, have to have makes, their talking points ready sense. and debunk them. And it's 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 hard it's hard yeah, to so know I, all a... stuff. But I mean, birds are dinosaurs. That's if you want if you want a simple mm-hmm. proof. It's not that birds are like dinosaurs. Birds are dinosaurs. And we said, humans well, are how did apes. people come from apes? Yeah. We are still we apes. are apes. By definition and derivation. And if and they there's, object, there's ask them if they are mammals, ask them if they are chordates, ask them if they are eukaryotes, right? Why do they accept all of these other uh, taxa and not that particular one, right? I ain't no, I ain't no animal. Maybe you're an animal. I ain't no animal. Well, what the hell's an animal? An, an animal is a multicellular eukaryote with an <laughs> internal digestive tract, right? Are you heterotroph? Yeah. Are you not that? Yeah. I don't understand all that. <laughs> yeah. But even, even yeah. the Bible admits that we're animals. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 3, 18 to 21. So you've, you've got that. You've got every dictionary admits that we're animals. So just start working from there. So you, you accept that you're an animal. You don't have a choice to accept that you're an animal. And then, you know, are you a vertebrate? Meaning you, you have a backbone, right? And then people will say that these things don't apply yeah. to me. And I have to explain that, hey, I don't believe in astrology. <laughs> but because my birthday is in the middle of October, I understand that that means that I'm a Libra. I don't have to believe in yeah. astrology to admit that I'm a Libra by the definition the of what a Libra is. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's that's a very good, very good point. Very good explanation. Um, I have one last question. Um, I I find like religious people ask me this question, and that's very annoying. Basically, they ask me uh, if you can't see see consciousness. Uh, you still believe that there is consciousness. So this is this is a very very stupid question, and I don't know. You how ask to this question because, again because I don't uh, think I heard it. If you are believing something, with yeah, what they, are you doing that other than consciousness? Yeah, I I tell them 
um, that consci consciousness for me is a uh, is a thinking brain, an active brain. So if we faint, we go unconscious, and if we die, we go unconscious. There's nothing more to it. Uh, but they say you can't see consciousness, but still you believe it. So there should be a god. Like they're explaining as if if I can't see can we not? Uh, something, can we not it doesn't mean that. I'm, yeah, we we don't believe consciousness, consciousness. is an aware. We are conscious. Consciousness is an awareness of yourself and your surrounding. Can we not see that in like all organisms? Descartes says that's the only thing we truly know, right? I think therefore I am. It's the only thing that you know for certain is that you exist in our conscious. Right? Uh, ironically, he contradicted yeah. himself later in the same book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It, it's, it's so it's so it's so embarrassing. He's famous for the quote that he contradicted in the same book. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he later he later went on to say that he can't be sure that he exists. He can only be certain that God exists. <laughs> That's a cop out. Yeah, and how did he get famous saying something oh so stupid God. as that? Yeah, I know. Well, he did other stuff. The Cartesian Maybe, like, coordinates are pretty useful. Uh, every religion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the so so basically, I've uh, I've been talking to religious people for the past two two and a half months, and every religion's uh, belief in God uh, hinges on an <clears throat> assumption that this is a creation and there should be a, a creator. So that's an assumption they couldn't prove. And with that assumption, they have created hell, heaven, and every rule book, every guideline with which we have to live our lives. We can't sin and everything. So that's now you're in stupid. India and you're talking about uh, Christian concepts, right? Are you talking about Christianity? Uh, I'm talking about uh, most of the religions. Like I've I've talked to Christian people, I've talked to Islam uh, Muslims, and I've even talked to my own religion religious people, Hindu. Okay, so that when you, so you, you are most of them say, in India, you're like eighty percent Hindu, right? Yeah, so I I belong to a Hindu family. I was always an agnostic, and then uh, after an event, I was convinced that there's no God, and then I read about Richard Dawkins and evolution, and that made me clear that uh, there couldn't be a God. There couldn't be a God, definitely. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. If so, God is not um, even yeah, a possibility. Yeah, so how how many years back did you figure this out? Like, there shouldn't be a go. Uh, oh, that's so embarrassing for me. I I, I believed in in new uh, age spiritual nonsense for such a long time. I was I was so in my mid. Religious? I was in my mid thirties before I realized that, that there is no supernatural at all. And how did your family react? Like. What was their re reaction after realizing that you are no, no longer a thief? Well, they didn't like me anyway, to start with. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they really didn't. Yeah, but the, when I when I didn't believe in God, they didn't really have a problem with it. It wasn't they didn't really have a problem with me until I didn't worship the orange god. Oh, that that was the rift. Yeah, that's that split me from all of my family connections. And you know what? Uh, I made an observation between uh, in in is Islam and Christianity. Both religions say if you don't worship our God, you'll go to hell. So my point is, uh, all they uh, reduce all so they reduced down this God to only an attention seeker. Like he just wants attention. If you don't give him attention, you'll go to hell. How can they call this? Uh, how can they call this God uh, uh, like all loving and all loving, yeah. all loving God? Like, how can they call this? Uh, yeah, you've hit the yeah, nail on the head. That's, that's how we crazy, know for right? a fact that these gods are not real. Right. I know for certain that the Christian God, as believed by fundamentalist Christians, is not real for a fact. Me too. I cannot necessarily extrapolate that to any conceivable deity. That's much harder to do. But it's very easy yeah. to reject the gods of the major religions. They make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I know that the Bible God yeah. does not yeah. exist, uh, and that's demonstrable. Yeah. The Bible yeah. God easy definitely do. does not exist. How can you demonst demonstrate that? What I just because said. the Bible God depends on the Bible, 
and virtually all of the important stories in the Bible have been disproved. Adam and Eve are genetically impossible. We yeah. know for certain, and even evangelical yeah. scientists know that, <clears throat> that, 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 that um, the Garden of Eden is just a metaphorical fable, that Adam and Eve could not have happened. They know that, that not only that the, the global flood of Noah's Ark could not have happened, we also have proof yeah. that it didn't happen. Even if it was magical, it doesn't matter. We yeah. have proof that it didn't happen. The, the, the Tower of Babel didn't happen. The Exodus didn't happen. All this shit didn't happen. It, it, really, the guy living three days in the belly of a whale slash fish because nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. This is all fables. Also, comparative a religion, trumpet we, that can prove down that a, we, can, we can prove that all of those stories are plagiarized from older religions as well, right? <laughs> that's yes, easy to yes. do, too. And that's, that's the yeah. really important thing. So if, if you look at Adam and Eve, you'll go right to the core. Adam and Eve is based on a compilation of tropes taken from Enuma Elish, from the, the legend of Adapa, from the story yeah, of Mesopotamians. Uh, and Ninhursag. There's, there's all these different legends that, that already existed <clears throat> centuries before the formation of, of, of Genesis. The, the, the Genesis is just a compilation of all these different tropes. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Uh, the the Israelites were uh, were in exile in Babylon when they were writing up the Talmudic literature, and that's where they got most of their myths or ripped off from. Yep, that's where the Exodus the comes from. So it's not actually from Egypt; it's more from Babylon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know what? Um, these religious groups are spreading the fear fear of God. Like, if you don't worship the God, you'll go to hell. So they are spreading the fear of God, not love and respect. This is what I hate about religion, because uh, like uh, if Santa Claus is also a fictional character, God is also a fictional character. But I don't mind Somebody people believe told... in Santa Claus because San... yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Santa Claus said says says that if you if you're a good boy, you'll get a gift. If you're not a good boy, you won't get a gift. But only yeah. and only God as a fictional character is threatening everyone with hellfire so Eternal basically torture. they yeah so god uh, god is not to be respected and loved he's just saying that like you should fear god that that's a bad way of creating a religion that's not how a, a god should be like even if i don't believe in god but if you're creating a god at least make him a good god well, that's why yeah, the New Testament told me tried today. to switch it up, right? The, the God changed on a dime, but somehow they're supposed to be the same God, right? <laughs> somebody told me today that they were going to pray for me. And I said, well, while you're doing that, why don't you wish upon a star and write a letter to Santa? Because you're going to get the same results. And somebody in the comments mentioned that, that Matt Dillahady would completely disagree with my plagiarism approach. I'm not saying that Genesis is plagiarized. I'm saying that it was influenced. Yeah by other tropes that had already been okay. around for thousands of years. For example, so on, on, we, if you talk about the Exodus, when you know, knows, know, uh, where, where Moses parts the Red Sea, there's another story from a mm -hmm. thousand years earlier than the time that they attribute to Moses, which by the way, that's already, the, 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 Moses, the story about Moses is not as old as, as Moses is supposed to be, but there's another story that is, a thousand years older than Moses is supposed to be. And that's about a guy that not only, that he didn't part the sea. Instead, he, he lifted over the corner of a lake like it was a blanket so that he could reach under it, the water, pick out something, and then put the blanket of water back. And that's a thousand years yeah. older. Than, and that's actually more yeah. impressive than parting the sea. So yeah, there's nothing better. original here. All of these, all of these events already were yeah. attributed to other. Indra walked on water, for example. I mean, Bacchus turned water into wine in a much more dramatic way than Jesus did. There's virtually nothing about the Jesus story or or even the Exodus story that all, wasn't already predated in other people's mythology. Mm -hmm. Yep, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. You know what? I have a I have a theory about why they created why humans created a god. So uh, when we are a child, we look look up to a powerful being, which is parents, right? When we are in school, our teacher and the principal of the school are powerful, right? When we go go join a job, uh, then we have a manager and a CEO. We all we are always 
used to be relying on a super power or maybe maybe a power that is uh, more powerful than us so it is it is very difficult to comprehend uh, so so for adults they created god right so it is very difficult to comprehend that there is no powerful being and we are all on our own like the struggle the brutality of life is is so 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 bad so brutal that they they to to maintain their sanity they have to believe that there is a super power or someone more powerful for them because we are raised like that it's arrested development in the pre operational stage of morality mm -hmm. right an overarching authority figure tells you this is do this don't do that and that's all right mommy said so daddy said so, so yeah there's a do. there's a psychological aspect that leads to whether somebody's going to believe what be religious and it, for me the the, the idea that because I said so, that's why, is not an explanation. If you're the kind of child who does not right. accept because I said so, that's why, then you don't believe in authority declarations. You want reason, and that means you're yeah. ultimately going to end up being atheist. Or at yeah. least not if you'll reject the fact, yeah, so... if you will accept what the authority says, mm -hmm. even when the facts prove the authority wrong, then you're going to be religious. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I agree. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, I I really like I I really enjoy talking to you guys. It you're doing you you're doing a very good job. Like I I really 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 appreciate this. Thank, Thank you. you kindly. And where where in India are you? If you don't mind my asking. Yeah, it's New Delhi, the capital of India, New Delhi. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've been there. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you have. Go ahead and let you go. We'll jump on to the next caller. Thank you for calling. How long do we go here, right, by the way? Bye-bye. Yeah, See ya. Uh, we go until I get tired. Oh, okay. I should <laughs> wrap up relatively soon. I got to attend to some family stuff. Well, how long do you okay, normally go? Fine. I, I, think, I think we only request two hours. Okay. But, I mean, we, we can go longer than that. So I'm going to pick up the, the next caller. We have another atheist on, and this is Gabriel. Gabriel's question is, how can I respond to somebody who says Christianity is not a religion? It is a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Gabriel, prophet of the particular I religion that you believe in. I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm atheist. Hey, how's it going? So is, is, that, your, is that your question? Do you need... Like, okay. how do you respond to somebody who says that? Or Yeah, yes, I well, ask I him, mean, what's I have, the... Uh, family members, but... Hello? Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. I have, um, I guess, uh, family members that uh, are here. I'm atheist myself. So, you know, they, they, they're, they try to portray religion as is... It's not Christ Christianity is not a religion because there's an audience connotation that goes with religion. So they know ah. it. So, so what yeah. is the l world's largest religion then? I'm pretty sure it's Christianity. <laughs> well, that would kind of require that Christianity be a religion, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. But the point is, yes. right, G Jesus is the prophet of a particular religion called Christianity. Right. It's what do you mean? A relationship with Jesus. Right. Other people who are religious believe in different prophets and different deities and things. Right. It's uh, it's I, I've heard people say that, too, and it just blows my mind how unbelievably ignorant it is. Right. Um, would there be any other suggestions that you could tell me besides those? Well, yeah, I, I mean, you can I say that. I don't know about the Apostle James. Yeah, you, you could say that Islam isn't a religion, it's just a relationship with Muhammad, or uh, hin, uh, Bhakti Hinduism is a relationship with Lord Krishna, because there have been, there have been people who said that they, they've not only experienced the Holy Spirit, but that they've personally met, seen, and heard Lord Krishna in the room with them. If you practice the mantras, Lord Krishna will appear and have a conversation with you. That's a personal relationship well, that Christian Jesus can't thing, promise. Though. What's that? Christians have said the same thing. 
They, they don't have okay. they don't have conversations with Jesus visibly in the room. Here, here's the point. What is a religion? It is a set of beliefs uh, that uh, that uh, correlate with a particular deity as described by a particular set of religious scripture. Uh, it comes with customs and holidays and specific places of worship. Right. There's a lot of construction here that uh, that require that uh, that qualifies uh, something as a religion. Right. And that's what Christianity is. It has scripture and it has particular churches and specific figures in the church and a particular deity. Right. All of these things make it a religion. So it's objectively a religion. Anyone who says so that otherwise is an insane person. There's <laughs> just no two ways about it. OK. All right. Yeah, and my definition of religion, <laughs> and I realize that the right. government doesn't use this definition. And that's how satanic temple gets to be treated as a religion. But my my definition of religion is always that that every religion that is universally accepted as such by both adherents and critics is a faith based belief system that posits the notion that a supernatural essence of self somehow survives the death of the physical body to continue on in some other form. Not every religion has a god, but they all have this notion of a soul. Okay. All right. Then. All right. Have we have we answered the question? Yeah. I mean, I was going to use uh, say also the Epistle of James calls Christianity a religion. Would that be a good uh, counter? Oh yeah. If if, I mean, if the people that you're talking to are biblical literalists, you can have all kinds of fun quoting the Bible back at them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Quote I can use from the Bible. Oh, I like Jeremiah eight eight. Yeah, Jeremiah eight eight. Have fun with that one. Okay. (laughs) Well, thank you very much. (laughs) All right, my pleasure. We'll move on to the next caller. Thank you very much. Okay, so next up we have. Next up, we have Jesse. Uh, Jesse is in Virginia. And hold on a sec. I thought I dropped that one. Uh, for whatever reason, it's not dropping the call when I tell it to. So, uh, Gabriel, if you're still here. Yeah, G- G- Gabriel, go ahead and hang up because I can't seem to end the call on this end for whatever reason. And Jesse in okay, Virginia. Thank yep, thank you much. Uh, and Jesse, do I don't want to read out your question. Uh, j- go ahead and read it for me. Uh, um, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm Jesse. Um, uh, I'm struggling theist. Um, uh, I've got 15 years sober in a 12 step program. Um, and is essential to sobriety in a 12-step program is the idea of a higher power. Um, yeah. And uh, I've been having, like, I don't know, like an existential crisis every day recently um, because I've been, I've been questioning, you know, like, if, well, if there's no God or there's higher power, if there's no, like, reason or purpose to any of this, then, like, why stay sober? Because then, ultimately, everything is just, like, love is just a chemical action. It's not a real thing. Why Emotions stay faithful to my wife? Why not just last heroin and, you know, hook up with a ton of chicks and have fun till it all goes down? Um so I always noticed that, really that people tend that, yeah. to, people tend to value most that which is rare, and what what is more rare than life, the the few moments that you have, and while you will not live forever in heaven, fortunately, fortunately, you will not have to kiss mm-hmm. the colon of an inexplicably insecure demonic despot forever. Uh, there is the notion that whether there was a God or not, history will be your judge. 
and your legacy will be in in the in the memories of your loved ones and that for some of us tends to matter i have a question yeah. uh yeah, let me ahead. ask one thing real quick um you said that uh that the concept of a higher power is required to maintain sobriety but if there is no higher power how did you maintain your sobriety um no so i'm i'm a i'm not atheist i'm a struggling theist for sure um, right so well, let's say there and, is no higher that's, power because that's a conclusion no, yeah he, to, right? he's he's coming from the background he believes there is a higher power sure but let you see you said you're struggling with it you're faltering with it you're trying to reckon with the notion that there may not be a higher power so let's mm -hmm. say there is no higher power how did you then maintain your sobriety in this time um do a probably like a big psychological trip trick i i i honestly i don't know um doing the practicing you did it, the, right? the principles within you yeah yeah really? something within me but but the, the 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 problem with that is i've i've not been able to I haven't heard a satisfying answer from atheists or people that just reject like the notion of a higher power as to why that matters at all outside of my brain. Like it, it seems did utterly, I not just it, answer it, that. No, I, you, you did, but I mean, like I, I don't know. It's I, I, I could say that I value that. But then ultimately, that's like there's actually no value outside of that. But if you need to be told, I, I'm what a to little value, confused. How much value can it truly have? Do you want to be disrespected by the people you care about? Um, if if there's no higher power, then I don't know that that disrespect means anything, or that it's anything to be really worried about. Doesn't it I'm mean everything? Fighting. If there's no higher power, doesn't the, doesn't the people who who love you mean everything? Right. Why would you want to alienate um, all of these people with terrible behavior? Right. Isn't that the 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 thing that makes you happy having these relationships? It it might. Uh, I mean, but 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 what is like? I guess like ultimate like. It's 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 just like I'm just kind of like blowing time until the lights go out at that point and like like well you don't do killing bio. time you could be Broke using it wisely you can do well, whatever look, you want look, look, in, look, 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 this is this kind of perspective I think if he if he describes it long enough he'll see his own flaw mm -hmm. which is I, I I don't know that I I don't know like I if if ultimately the sun is going to swallow the earth in 10,000 or whatever billion five years or whatever billion. like yeah 5 billion oh tight oh, so we got some time um you and and I'm I'm not and I'm not trying to be I'm 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 not trying to be disrespectful or 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 totally fine you know anything like that like I just, I'm just really trying to be honest in in the that like I have it, it it terrifies me if there's no higher power because then there's no ultimate meaning and the meaning is just whatever i make up and to me that and and All so ultimately outside of my brain it's yeah it's 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 not actually meaningful no but then it, it's that's just the here's it that is I'm meaningful it, it is only meaningful if it is truly meaningful to you and not the external will of some deity uh that needs for you to worship him, right? I've yeah, got a no, psychological and, and, and experiment. Yeah. I've got a psychological sure. experiment you might want to consider. Imagine that at uh. the moment of your death, you find out that there's there's this thing that you you know when you that the, the old belief that your life flashes before your eyes, right? Well, imagine uh. that all of your matter, all of your your accumulated knowledge, everything, allows you to live again in a moment before your body shuts completely off, before your brain completely shuts off, that you can live your entire life all over again, and you can do whatever you want. And whether or not there's a God in this, you'll, you'll feel like 
you know, if, if you want to go back to when you were 14 or 18 or whatever, you get to live your whole life out and just, just have it all over again. It may only be happening in a few seconds, but you'll feel it as if it's 30, 40, 50 years, however long it was. But the thing is, one of the things you innately understand is that whether there's a God or not, you will not be judged. What you do with this in this relive of your life matters not. Whether you're judged for your previous life, we don't know, you don't know. But you know that this relive counts for nothing. You get to do this however you want. And my thought is that most people, my, I, my, my thought, you, you could get away with raping and murdering and just vandalizing everything, but nobody wants to do that. If you got to live this over again, I think most people, knowing what they know now, would be better people than they were the first time around, even when they don't have to be, even when it means nothing. Yeah, and that may be, I don't know, the, the, the first thought that comes to my mind is I'd probably just to like a vigilante and just, you know, kind of why? give in to whatever. Be, How? Because why, why not? <laughs> like, because like, why? If I could just go around. The question like, was why, because it would make not me why feel not. Good. Because, okay, right, it, because it would make it me make feel good. Does it make you feel good? What specifically Does it make you feel good to cause people pain? Do you mean vigilante like you would go like murder like r horrible people and give them their comeuppance? Or what do you mean yeah. by vigilante? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, you, could do you know, now. like um, you could do that even believing in God too. What's the difference? I could. Um, there's there's thing to live for now, I guess, with my with my wife and like if there's some like I. I Okay. to know the reason for why everything is here like i just need there to be a reason you know what i'm saying oh um, no i don't yeah. but but here's the thing you just said that you value your relationship with your wife right if there were not to be any higher power why why do you why are you uh, uh suggesting that the value in your relationship would somehow dissipate if there was no higher power right what you have with your wife you have with your wife whether or not there is a god What's, why would it change? I do. I do. It, I guess it would just change the quality of it to just like biological what? programming. I, I don't know, have you ever seen that? Uh, because it, because it would. Have, um, I think that's not an answer. I, I don't. I don't know. Does it would? <laughs> what you yeah, have with your wife, you have whether or not there is a higher power. Right. You have yeah. that currently. Yeah. Now, if I and knew in advance, relationships too. What's that? If I knew in advance certain in, uh, certain injustices, and I knew the way to uh, to stop those injustices, and I had another chance to live again, I probably would. If I if I knew the details enough to to have an effect there, but being a vigilante, just mm. going out and hunting. I mean, I know there's no fucking Batman. That that doesn't work. That would that's not realistic. <laughs> But it also has nothing to do with the belief in God. You can be a vigilante today, whether or when you believe in God or not, right? I mean, I, I don't see how that has any correlation yeah. with belief in God or not. Look, you have relationships. Yeah, you have a relationship with your wife. You have a relationship with, with friends, presumably. You have things of value in your life. And the, the, the value that you derive from that is not it is not an offshoot of your belief in a higher power. It just isn't. You could cease believing in a God today, and all of those things would still exist and continue to mean those things to you. A hundred percent, right? There are people, I'm an atheist, and I have, I value my relationship with my wife and my children, my friends, et cetera. And I behave in a way so as to maintain those relationships because they bring me joy, not because I'm expected to by a higher power or some other reason like that. Right. These are these are human sentiments that we all share and uh, has nothing to do with mm -hmm. God. At, at any point in my life, there was a time when when I just when I wanted to live in the moment when I didn't life never had meaning. That's just a stupid question for me. And I just wanted to live for the sake of living. You know, I was a young, good looking guy and I'm having a great time. And that's all that life meant to me. But I didn't want to disrespect other people. I still want to be remembered fondly, 
I want to be respected myself. So I'm, I, while I was a bit of a dick because I was an ignorant prick, I didn't want to be a dick to other people. So I had to learn how not to be, you know, and, and I, I got over that to a large degree, I hope. Because I was a real dick. <laughs> We've all hurt people's feelings before. I mean, yeah, you, you hopefully yeah. as you get older, you mature and you do that less, right? But, um, yeah, it's all internal, you know. Yeah. I try always to murder fewer yeah, no. people this year than I did last year. Yeah, because there's no God. You can do it, right? Well, <laughs> no, I mean... That, I mean, laws are important. I think that murder should be illegal and that it should be uh, enforced to punish murderers, you know, but that's just human society. That doesn't. Right. But I guess that... to, what, to what, to what end? What do you mean to, to what like, end? What, like what, like what does what? that actually, like what does that actually matter outside of. How, okay. Here's, here's right an now. important question. This you're, you're getting to something much more important. There is no God. There is only us. And we have to take care of each other. That's just, that's all that there ever was. So the reason that it matters is that we have to rely on each other to help each other, humans being humanitarian. But believers have this, if you don't mind my saying, perverse idea that, that they're going to de defy death and they're going to, and, and for whatever, and that, Kissing the ass of an inexplicably insecure despot for all eternity somehow gives meaning to their lives. To me, it deprives all meaning. You're 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 going to put me in damnation. Right. You're going to put me in. You're going to put me trap me in the house with little Anthony Fremont, who can read my mind, and I better be thinking good thoughts. And he's going to do terrible things to me if I don't. I'm I'm not looking forward mm -hmm. to this. This doesn't give meaning to my life. If my if I exist for absolutely forever, my life doesn't mean anything anyway. We tend to, yeah. to, to value things that are rare. If it's always and forever, that is no value. It's yeah. the Religion moment that we live. Of its meaning, not the, not the It's converse, the moment yeah. that we live that matters. Um, yeah, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think any, like, I think I, if there is a God, it's definitely not what any of the religions describe, because it just doesn't make any sense if they're talking about, like, something eternal and, whatever you, gentlemen they apply all these human characteristics to it and you know it's it's absolutely stupid so i don't i, I don't believe in any like that at all um gentlemen we need to yes. move on to super chats yeah. okay all right and i know that uh oh, mr yeah. professor dr david <laughs> whatever the the, the the title is uh farina needs to go Dave is good so yeah okay <laughs> I will appreciate the conversation, right, so, fellas. Thanks for yep, calling in. I, I, good, I, as do we. One. So thank you very much. Uh, and we're not we're we're not going to take the remaining calls then. No, sir. Producer. Okay. All right, then we will move on to super chats. Uh, and can you put them on for us? Thank you so much. I'll start out. Five dollars from Zach B. Hancock. Whoops! What happened to it? Whoops! Yep. Old one. That was an old one. Okay, $10 from Jake Nelson. Let's talk science with guys who learn about science all day. Not a good idea. Way to keep your cool, guys. Thank you, Con. Do our best. <laughs> uh, so you read the next these? one when I'll it comes one. up. Okay. <clears throat> Five pounds from Critical Corey. Two of my absolute favorite creators on here. Love you both so much. The work you do is incredibly invaluable. Lots of love from the UK. Thank you. Happy to do it. Fifteen dollars from Hybrid Neos, a huge fan of Professor Dave. I like the recent series on early logic slash philosophy, uh, not the physical sciences, since it's Eclipse Day. I will give any flat earther one hundred dollars if they predict the next U.S. eclipse. <laughs> Gladly, yeah, yeah. I I predicted yeah. today would be a day that we wouldn't hear anything from the the flat Earth people. This well, is their shut up about day. it somewhere. No, they 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 have, they have some. I I don't know what it is, but they try to talk about it. Ten dollars from Jake Nelson. Let's. Oh, that's wait. We already read that one. Yep.
Five dollars. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, you're reading. Oh, okay. I'll, Five dollars from Monkey at Typewriter. Dave, evolution is a theory, just like plate te tectonics. Well, Dave, have you seen a tectonic plate, or is it just faith? Checkmate, reality lover. I mean, I, I assume that's uh, that that that's sarcasm. <laughs> I don't really need to actually respond to it. But I have geology yeah, I grew content up in the... that outlines uh, the the uh, how plate tectonics came to be. It's very interesting, yeah. actually. I grew up in SoCal. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Everything monkey at typewriter says is sarcastic. Okay, good to know. Gotcha. And $5 from Skeptoidius. Terribly sorry to the Christians who didn't get raptured this time around. Better luck next rapture and all that. <laughs> yep. $10 from Gotastrophe. Aaron, Aaron, Ra, and Prof. Dave on the same show. Simply amazing. Thanks for all of your amazing work. Guys, happy to do it. I was, I was uh, very pleased when I saw you at that debate and you, and you gave me a wave or an, an acknowledgement that I was there. That was, that was warm. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, well, we... Oh, are, oh, you meant the, that person or me? No, you. you when, I, when, oh, okay. I, when I saw you at the debate, when you recognized me in the audience... That was that was oh, very of kind. Well, you're hard to miss, but we did speak beforehand. <laughs> I was like, All right, can you come? Like, let's go. Let's meet up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So five dollars from Jonathan, Mr. Farina. <laughs> Classic. That's always going to be a good quote. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty dollars from Will B. Friend. Love the show. You gentlemen are awesome. Can I ask for recommendations on evolution information for children? My daughter's 10 and I believe she's old enough to push back against her friend's religious assertions. Do you mm. have one? It, it, all I can do is promote my own content because I make mm -hmm. content specific for these kind of things. So my systematic classification of a life series would be one that I would recommend if you're looking for specific evolution. I mean, I do a lot of phylogeny videos, evolution of snakes, evolution of, uh, of, of arthropods. I'm going to be doing one for xenarthrins soon. So mm -hmm. yeah, check my channel. And yeah. I don't know what your, yeah. uh, your answer would be. My stuff's more high school college age or my, my biology series is like ninth grade level so maybe if i mean give it a shot i think that could work yep. is it your turn i think it's your turn five pounds from mystic mind analysis from the video game night in the woods i believe in a universe that doesn't care but people who do i like that yep Works for me. Because the universe will just fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah. Five dollars from Monkey, a typewriter. I'm a hard atheist for about 10 minutes a night. Then I'm a sleepy atheist. Sometimes I'm a sticky atheist, depending on my aim. Fun show, guys. Oh, it's I didn't need that fun visual. Fun and gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then $10 Australian from PhD Tony. Mr. Farina! And Aaron both have taught me an enormous amount. The trick is being willing to shut up and listen to people who know more than I do about their spe in their specialties. <clears throat> Five dollars from Taterama, Mister Farina. Go, go, no caps. Just the that's the chill, the chill tour. <laughs> <laughs> $9.99 from Boscus. Dave, do you have any tips for communicating science without having a science background? I love sharing cool knowledge, but I'm not pursuing a science degree. Also, Dave and Forrest co-hosting soon, please. What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I, I think that to be an effective science communicator, you definitely have to have a science background. I mean, a bachelor's in some science is sufficient. Um, without a science background, I mean, I guess you can sort of act as more of somebody who compiles examples of SciComm and just says like, you know, uh, these people have talked on these subjects and kind of point others in a, in the right direction. Of course, you can also just sort of learn from SciCommerce and share that information with people in your life. Like, I, I definitely like that many people have been able to take what I've done with like the James Tour videos or something and debunk their followers and like you know use those arguments um yeah just uh keep sharing
four ninety nine from Ben Nine Lives. Don't worry. Be happy. Ten dollars from Darian's writing desk. The sun is shining again. The earth is still here. CERN didn't implode the universe. NASA didn't blow up the earth with rockets. Oh well, on to doing the same thing we do every night, Pinky. The Pinky, <laughs> the Pinky, and the burn, 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 burn. All right, I guess that's the end of the super chats. So what is next for you or upcoming for you? You got anything to promote? Uh, nothing, uh, just like a few little talks online. Like I'm doing on Thursday, I'm doing Bay, Bay area skeptics. Uh, Eugenie Scott reached out. So I'll give, uh, was, you know, pretty much one of the talks that I tend to give. Uh, I, I, I'm doing well these days with like skeptics communities and, uh, secular communities and stuff. So, cause people appreciate the debunking of all the apologists and everything. Uh, other than that, just working on the channel. What about you? All right. Well, uh me a favor when you meet Eugenie, uh, you give her my respects, would you please? Sure. Yeah, she's the best. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess we are done. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I think we had like, what was it? Uh, we, we had like 1,100 people watching this show. So that's, that's oh, wow. pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Looks like you got a bit of a fan base. It's a, it's a Bruin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great to see everybody. Thank you so much.